If you're a high achiever and you're dealing with perfectionism as in struggling with perfectionism because you can't get things done because you are so critical and analytical on what you are doing on a consistent basis, continue to watch this podcast or listen to it because this is for you. Welcome back to the Chasing a Greater Vision podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Jasper. Today's topic, uh, we're talking about dealing with perfectionism and embracing imperfection as a high achiever. Now, this is so important because high achievers typically want to be perfect all the time and not utilize the 80-20 rule. So we'll do it like every other podcast. We'll go through the top uh, four ways to deal with it um, at a high level. Number one is know where you are in the process. Number two, connect with like-minded people. Number three, set work boundaries. And number four, face your mortality. So perfectionism is something that I've struggled with and I continue to struggle with because uh, I always want to uh, achieve at my highest level. I always want to feel that I've accomplished something and my feeling of accomplishment is if I've done it perfect and if I've not made mistakes. Making mistakes for me is like, you know, putting me in some type of some type of hell, right? Uh, but what perfectionism costs us, because I kind of want to run this through, is it costs us time, um, time away from, you know, where we're supposed to be focused focusing on time away from the people that we love. Uh, it, it causes peace. You know, there's a lot of mental anguish when things aren't right. There's a lot of um, areas where we just overly criticize ourselves when we're not perfect. Uh, it, it it costs us appreciation for what is. We, we don't uh, sink into the present moment and really appreciate all that we have. And sometimes that moment passes us by. And then we look back and we're like, well, we missed the good old days because we were so focused on being perfect for some future gain, right? Uh, it can cost us creativity. When we're perfect, when we try to be perfect, sometimes we are are so rigid to some standard that creativity means that you're going to make mistakes, that you're going to fail. And sometimes it costs us relationships. And, and I know this from my life because early on uh, in my relationship with Carly, I d- demanded perfection out of her. I demanded perfection out of myself. And it caused a lot of tension and strain and a lot of walking on eggshells because you know, when you push for perfectionism out of somebody else uh, and out of yourself, there's no room for error. And anytime there's error, there's tension. Uh, and what it causes us, it causes us to delay progress. It causes us to overanalyze and it causes us mental stress, right? So these are the things that perfectionism uh, definitely cost and cause us. And if that's, that's you, and typically if you're a high achiever, you struggle with that in some capacity because part of achieving highly is really hitting the marks that you set out for yourself. Uh, and it's also not focusing on the 80%, even if the 20% is off, right? The 80, 20 rule. It's like if 80% is good and the 20% is, is bad. Hey, it's no problem. Keep moving forward. Typically as perfectionists, we focus on that 20% and we try to get that 20% right by completely neglecting the 80% and then we're in a world of hurt. So if this is you, um, this will definitely help you get past that. It will definitely help you uh, really embrace imperfection and see the beauty of imperfection and see how much imperf- how much embracing imperfection will help you and will actually help you achieve uh, even at a higher level. So number one in our tips and tricks, these are just practical tips to help you get past whatever we're talking about. So number one is... Know where you are in the process. Now, I used to run an apparel company called 413 Apparel, and we ran for five years, and we we really popped in 20, 2020, popped as in like we, we hit a, a really good amount of revenue, things were growing and everything, but I remember even before that and the, the year that we popped, I was so jealous of other apparel companies that were bigger than us, that were getting bigger than us, that had already hit, you know, millions of dollar marks, right? And and I was jealous for so many different reasons. I was looking at, I was like, well, they have an influencer that's pushing them and that's why they're making so so many sales because our quality is better and so so on and so forth. Or or they had X amount of funding. And I and I really was neglecting where we started from. I was neglecting where we were in the process. We started from my studio apartment in San Diego, San Diego, California with one tank, right? completely self-funded and we grew to, you know, multiple six figures of a company. And that was just in my, uh, you know, um, uh, studio apartment in San Diego. And then as we grew out of that into a small warehouse and all this, right. So 
I was completely neglecting where I was in the process and I was looking at somebody else where they were in the process and they were years and years ahead of where we were and I was comparing myself. So when you know where you are in the process, you don't compare yourself so much and typically as a high achiever, you surround yourself with other high achievers and or you watch content of other high, high achievers and you look at where they're at and you compare and you sit back and you say, well, they're here and I'm back here, but I should be there and so this means that I have to be so perfect because if I'm so perfect, then I'll get to where they're at, which that might not be true because we all have our different uh, paths that we go on. We all have our different lanes. We all have our different, uh, what I believe God puts us on, you know, our own path and our own lane to get to a place. And, and I'll just, you know, use this as an example. If you've watched my content, you've known kind of the name and the branding of my content change, right? First, it was the left lane project. That's when I used to write. And part of it was because the left side of the brain used for thought and reason, lane, the lane that you're supposed to be in and project, you're supposed to build uh, and, and, and be in a building phase of your life so you can just build and stay in your lane. The next thing, when I really started kind of getting into podcasting a little bit more on my own, it was, you know, create your lane. And it was because I, the, the word lane was you're supposed to stay in your lane. You're supposed to create something based on God's gifts to stay in your lane and then just continue to progress. And now chasing a greater vision, you're on a path, you're chasing something, but you're chasing your vision and your greater vision for your life. Notice how none of that is focused on other people. It's not focused on anything else. And with that and with cha with chasing a greater vision for your life, there's going to be a lot of imperfection. There's going to be a lot of mistakes. So focus on yourself, focus on your path. Don't worry about other people else or their process. Number two, connect with like-minded people. Now, the problem, what I see here is social media allows for a lot of connection, but it doesn't allow for a lot of authentic connection. Or I'll put it like this. It allows for a lot of authentic connection. We just do not connect authentically, right? So when it comes to like-minded people, when it comes to high achievers, high achievers on social media are typically like, I made X amount of thousands or millions of dollars. Look at the car that I bought. Look at the house that I have. Look at the abundance of women that I have. Look at all of this. And by the way, I can help you get this life too, which it's like, if I'm being real, if I'm keeping it a buck, which I will always do here, I'm like, that's so shallow and cheesy, right? Because it doesn't show the process. It doesn't show, you know, what happens behind closed doors. And also it just shows this like prize, which is a fleeting feeling, which does nothing for you. I've been there, right? Like I can, I can confidently say that, you know, I've been there, like had the women done the things, whatever. And it's like, and it always left me empty. It always left me feeling like, well, there's got to be more to life. And the more to life is actually the depth. So connecting with like-minded people are connecting with people who are able to talk about the process and to talk about the imperfection that they've gone through as a high achiever, right? So I really like looking at content from this guy, Nick Bear. Uh, you know, I, I like the stereotypical, you know, David Goggins. Uh, I, I have a lot of friends who put out very authentic content, but I mentioned those two guys for for good reason. And the reason being is because they document their process. And not only do they document their process, they talk about it. They talk about the imperfections of the process. They talk about the difficult times. They show, you know, say Nick, Nick Bear specifically, before he had kids, what his focus was, you know, and how it was dialed in on business. Then once he had a daughter, all of this stuff started to happen. His priorities shifted. He had to change the way that his day was. He had to, you know, step back from being the CEO of, of Bear Performance and so to put another CEO in place so he could do X, Y, Z and just shows the imperfection of the process in the growth of the man, right? And I appreciate that stuff. And I think that if you're in a place where you're dealing with perfectionism, it might be because you're looking at things that you think are perfect, but you're not getting behind the veil and not understanding where the imperfection is, where the flaws of the people are, what they struggle with on a day to day, what they're battling on a day to day. That's why, you know, I like being on this podcast or talking on this podcast because I want to be authentic about the things that I've struggled with because you can see on social media and see people say things that sound really, really nice. But at the end of the day, you know, you want to be able to know what's behind that because we all struggle with things, right? So make make sure that you are um, finding people who are documenting their journey, who you can have a conversation with, who you can dive deep into what their imperfections are because you'll have that in common and that will be something that will allow you to feel okay with being imperfect as you're on, as you're running your race to do the things that you wanna do to, to achieve the things that you want to achieve. Number three, 
set work boundaries. The reason I have this is because this is something that I had to do, right? When we first moved into um, this house in Texas, you know, having an office here is great because that means that anything behind these closed doors, I can sit, I can work. This is like my boundary in here. But the problem was, was that over time, my time in here would start increasing because of increasing work demands, because of increasing anything. And I wouldn't set work boundaries because if people are working in different time zones and it's after like five or six six o'clock, people are pinging me at seven o'clock, I go back into the office and I'd be working for another hour, right? And so I'd be working into family time and everything. And it was like, well, my mind, I was like, well, I have this office boundary, so that's good because when I come out of the office, then I can focus on other things. But when I say set work boundaries, it's setting the time that you are able to work. Now, how does this relate to perfectionism? Is because you are setting a time in which you will allow yourself to give perfect effort or to try to give perfect effort. And then when you're outside of that, then just allow things to be and allow yourself to live life. Because I do think that there's an element of perfectionism that is healthy, right? Is when you're doing a task, you're trying to give your best effort, you are are, are really detail-oriented because accepting imperfect doesn't mean excusing yourself from doing lazy work or from doing lackluster work with lackluster effort. What it is is just saying, okay, if I make a mistake, that's, that's okay as long as I gave my best effort. So setting work boundaries for me has really been And what I had to do is take breaks throughout the day to walk the dogs. Now, that might seem cliche, but what it does is it allows me to step outside of an area where I sit back and I say, I give myself some grace for trying to be perfect to then get outside of it to just, I I don't take my phone with me, no headphones, no nothing. And I just walk the dogs for 10, 20, 30 minutes. And I just notice what's around. I focus on my breathing. I focus on the dogs. I look up at the sky. I focus on all the other things that really, really matter in life. And it's a really cool thing because it makes me wanna have more moments like that. And in the past, those were like imperfect moments because I wasn't you know, really focusing or forced to, to, to be perfect. But what it did was for me, I was like, oh, these are kind of imperfect moments, which in a weird way, they become perfect moments because I'm like, I really appreciate that. And I want more of that in my life. So when you set work boundaries, you set aside time that when you're outside of that, you're able to just live, you're able to allow things to be. And when I say allow things to be not trying to dictate what things are, right? Just allow it to be, just appreciate what things, you know, you know, where things are, because that also gives you so much more energy when you are getting back into the flow and into the swing, swing of things, when you have to be focused, when you have to be, you know, locked in, like in this podcast, I have to be focused. I can't be, you know, looking at the clouds and the sky and everything right now because I'm trying to deliver a message. I'm really, really locked in, right? You, you're going to have those moments, but taking yourself outside of that is going to be a good thing. It's going to be good for your mental and it's going to be good to allow yourself to, to have some imperfect time. And number four and last, face your mortality. I don't really have any notes on this because at the end of the day, I'll just be frank, like we're all not going to be here in X amount of years and nobody knows when, when your time is coming and nobody knows when my time is coming or our time is coming. And I say that because we try so hard to be perfect when we try so hard to just acquire stuff to, you know, boost our ego and we try so hard to lock ourselves in these rooms and just grind and grind and grind. It's like, Is that what's really important to you is just trying to hit this perfect mark with at the end of the day, at some point in time, we're just not going to be here. Is that the thing that, you know, when you die, somebody's going to remember you for, right? And I think about that all the time because in the past, all I was focused on was like, I have to make money. I got to get the car. I got to have the women. I got to have all this other type of stuff. And I have to be perfect. And I have to seem perfect in the eyes of others. Because if I do that, that's a life well lived. But it was killing me inside. I wasn't a happy person. It cost me all those things, time, peace, appreciation for what is, creativity, relationship. It cost me all of that, right? It, what it caused me, like I said at the beginning of this podcast, I, I delayed my progress. I overanalyzed things. I was mentally stressed out. That's what what happened, but when I was able to step back and realize being imperfect is okay, living by the 80 20 rule is okay, 80%. If 80% is good, boom, we're good. 20% is gonna be messed up. That's life. When I gave myself allowance for that, I actually started to achieve at a higher level because I enjoyed life more, I enjoyed work more, I enjoyed play more, I enjoyed so many more things because I realized, hey, we have a finite time that we're on this earth and it is what it is. And I am just going to enjoy where I can. I'm going to work hard where I can, but I'm going to focus on what's real. And by allowing perfectionism to kind of step to the side and by allowing myself to be imperfect, that's okay. 
it made things and it made life so much easier. So to recap this whole thing, number one, know where you are in the process. Number two, connect with like-minded people. Number three, set work boundaries. And number four, face your mortality. Again, perfectionism is a high achiever. It's just kind of innately there, but allowing for imperfect moments, allowing for the 80-20 rule. If 80% is good and 20% is messed up, that's life. It is what it is. Um, we're going to continue to do this. We're going to continue to improve together. I hope you all enjoyed this message. If you did, like it, comment, share it, send it to somebody else, and I will see you in the next episode. Peace. Thank you so much for watching this video. We have clips and content coming out every single week, full videos on Thursdays and clips coming out almost every single day. You can subscribe to this channel if you like it. Also, please send it to somebody who you know needs this message or any message that you see and we will see you in the next video.